Nolan has done it again. Produced on a comparatively small budget of $100 million, this PG-13 rated war epic is the 10th feature from acclaimed director Christopher Nolan, which scored over half a billion in ticket sales just a couple months after its July 21, 2017 release. Sharing the inspiring true story of the Allies' rescue from Dunkirk Beach during the Second World War, this 106-minute drama unfolds without much dialogue or even conventional protagonists. Instead, the extremely lean script illustrates through action and visuals alone how harrowing and dangerous the battlefields in the land, sea, and air really were. Fitting into one of those three location categories, the ensemble cast features understated and powerful performances from a slew of familiar faces, including Fionn Whitehead, Harry Styles, James Darcy, Kenneth Branagh, Killian Murphy, Mark Rylance, and Tom Hardy. Nolan's unique approach to their lack of development means each character is somewhat generic and interchangeable, though. The survival scenarios they constantly find themselves in are so terrifying and realistic, we can't help but picture ourselves in their shoes. And since we learn so little about these characters, most aren't even given names, this emotional transference is vital to the success of the narrative. Those expecting traditional character arcs or introspective monologues need to look elsewhere. Saving Private Ryan, this is not. Indeed, rather than personalizing a giant battle by showing a single soldier's experience, Nolan goes in the opposite direction, employing a giant ensemble with thousands of extras, with no single person receiving the lion's share of screen time. Dunkirk is an immersive experience that's bolstered by an extremely loud and visceral sound mix, unforgiving with its dynamic range. When gunfire pierces the silence, it is as startling as it is uncomfortable, or the terrifying sound of the Jericho trumpet sirens from German fighter planes as they dive for another attack run. Meanwhile, Hans Zimmer doles out an aggressively intense score that builds and builds to seemingly never-ending crescendos, constantly keeping the tension on edge, often drowning out all other sounds. The music is an overbearing accompaniment to the stressful action unfolding on screen, and one of the more memorable soundtracks in Zimmer's catalog, even if it is a bit distracting at times. Only the third movie of the decade to be primarily shot and filmed in the massive 70mm film format, Dunkirk is best experienced on the largest screen possible, which makes full use of the super-sized celluloid. But since a majority of filmgoers, not to mention 100% of the home media release, will only see a 16x9 cut of the picture, there are many shots that felt unnaturally framed due to the extended headroom in the non-cropped version. It's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't situations, but slightly distracting to see everyone's faces positioned in the dead center of the picture. But either way, all of it is stunningly detailed and hauntingly beautiful. Although to be fair, watching paint dry would probably look gorgeous too if it were projected from 4K IMAX laser projectors onto a 100 foot screen. The entirety of the air plot looks particularly astonishing, with cameras affixed to the inside and to the sides of Spitfire fighter planes as they swoop through the clouds above the English Channel. Easily the greatest aerial battles ever captured on film, these dogfighting scenes are worth the price of admission alone, and are even more impressive when you learn they were created without any computer effects. Prohibitive cost notwithstanding, if it could have been accomplished practically, it was, as Nolan chose to avoid CGI shots whenever possible. The results are seamless and realistic. Dunkirk explores several key scenes from different perspectives by inventively intercutting the narrative threads in a non-parallel way. As the technique arrives without any introduction or warning, it can be a bit confusing when you begin to see the same scene over from a different angle, but it does allow for additional insight. These are the types of creative decisions you don't usually associate with a summer blockbuster starring one of the hunky musicians from One Direction, but it works. Nolan may not be cinema's smartest filmmaker, but of the directors I'd consider smart, he's certainly the most accessible, and that counts for a lot. As I was hoping for a bit more historical insight and character development, I can't say this film is my favorite entry in Nolan's growing portfolio, but that doesn't preclude it from being one of the best war movies ever made. Dunkirk is a monumental achievement in blockbuster filmmaking and a truly amazing film. That does it for this Movie Night excerpt, but if you'd like to watch more reviews, click or tap the thumbnails on the left. And don't forget to visit the Jog Wheel YouTube channel to see full episodes of this show, in addition to all the other content I produce. My name is Jonathan Paula, thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.